Okay, um, we're starting uh, chapter 10 and we're skipping at section 10.1 and going right to the geometry part, which is what I think you'll be needing in uh, your professional life as you go through uh, the course requirements for uh, liberal arts. Uh, geometry comes from the Greek language that means measure the earth. So we're measuring something uh, that is physically on our planet. And uh, that means distance and triangles and rectangles and all that other good stuff. Geometry will be the study uh, that we study is going to be called Euclidean, Euclidean geometry. And that means a study of uh, angles, lines, uh, structures, uh, planes, those type of things. Not the aeroplane, but the planes. The philosopher Thales in the 6th century BC is given credit for the formula, the formalization of uh, the idea of geometry. But Euclid is said to be the father of geometry. And he worked on several books and I, um, and I think there were 11, no, 13, 13 volumes of elements. And he brought about the start of logic, logic. If some, something can be proven through arguments that prove certain given items, and then you can make that assumption. Euclid's assumption about parallel lines, uh, given a line and a point, not on the line, one, can, uh, one and only one line can be drawn through the given point parallel to the given line. Now, in parallel lines, According to Euclid, the distance between them from one point on a line to the other matching point or any points is the same. So if I draw a line here, this distance equals this distance equals this distance and so on and so on. So all the distances in between are the same and that's why we can call them parallel lines. Euclid's theorem, the sum of the measure of the three angles in any triangle is 180. Okay, well let's talk about angles before we get to that. Any angle uh, that is less than 90 degrees, and 90 degrees is marked by this uh, square at the vertex. This is a vertex to imply 90 degrees. Well, anything less than 90 is called an acute angle. Anything greater uh, than 90 and uh, less than 180 is called obtuse. And then we have the right angle, and then we have the straight angle. The straight angle is a line that has a center, and that is measured as 180 degrees. If I have um, adjacent angles, these are these two angles, supposing I have this. And I know this is angle one, and this is angle two. Okay, if I have adjacent angles that create straight angle, this angle here, if I add this one to this, I make a straight angle, then we say they are supplementary. That means they're equal to 180 degrees. So we can look at that. Um, as we go into the triangle. In the triangle, we're saying all the interior angles, the sum of angle one plus angle five plus angle three equals 180 degrees, which creates a straight line, a straight angle. So 
And we can see anything enclosed by those parallel lines. That's another Euclid theorem. Uh, and we'll be using that uh, to do the proof. And here's the proof. Angle 1 equals angle 2. Okay, that's alternating angles. That means one interior uh, of one interior of the diagonal and one exterior of the angle are equal. So that's one rule. That means that this angle equals this angle. Now we also have angle three. It measures angle four. So that is also a case that those two are equal. So let me erase this. All right, so, uh, and knowing that, uh, we have angle 2, 5, and 4 is a straight angle. So that means supplementary angles. Because they, they make this line happen. As I go from this angle to this angle, back to this angle, I have all of them end up on that line. So we have that condition as well. So then we can say from this, the measure of angle two and measure of angle five and measure of angle four equal 180. And uh, that's, that's true. As you can see the straight angle. And then we have angle, the measure of angle one and five and three is 180. That's also true by Euclid's uh, theorem. So then we can say angle one, five, and three equal 180. So there you have it. Now we have these classifications of triangles, of triangles. If we have all angles are acute, we have an acute angle. That means all angles are less than 90 degrees in the other triangle. A right triangle says we have one 90 degree angle and it makes it a right triangle. Obtuse means we have one angle that measures less than 180 degrees, which is a straight angle. But larger than 90 degrees. All right. And that would make it, this is an obtuse. Once we have an obtuse, uh, where we call it an obtuse triangle. Then we have some special cases. Isosceles means that the base angles are equal. And the sides are equal. That isosceles. Equilateral means that all of them are 60 degrees. And that goes by the theorem. Then we have a scalene. No two sides are equal in length. They're all different. 
So how do we use these concepts? Okay, we use the sum of interior angles of a triangle for 180 degrees to solve for missing an example. So we have this triangle and we have uh, angle A plus angle B plus angle C equal to 180 degrees. We know that angle B, the measure, I put, I put an M in front because we're measuring the angles, the measure of B is 45 degrees. The measure of C is 66 degrees. And we're looking for the measure of angle A. All right. So we're going to add these guys up. And it looks like the measure of angle A plus the measure of angles B and C added. So that would be 111. I subtract it. So that gives us um, 9, 7, 69 degrees is the measure of angle A. And we can see that then, that we know that angle A has to measure 69 degrees. And we must remember the little dot, the little circle rather, above the number, after the number, is degrees. So we have 45 degrees, 66 degrees, and our 69 degrees. And we're going to add them up. This is 20. So this is 10, 18, 180 degrees. All right. Well, here we have the notation for a 90 degree. by this little uh, square on the, and then we have 26 for B. So we can state that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C must equal 180 degree by Euclid's theorem. And we're going to replace what we know. We know that B is 26 degrees and we know that C is 90 degrees, but we don't know the measure of angle A. So we're going to combine like terms. We're going to add the 26 and 90. So we get 116 degrees equals 180 degrees. We're going to subtract the 116 degrees from both sides because we have to use that subtraction property of equality. What we do to the left, we have to do to the right. So then we have the measure of angle A is equal to, and it looks like 64 degrees. And we can use our calculator. I haven't been, but we'll use it. Make sure that I'm doing good math. And I'm gonna enter the 180 minus the 116 and get 64. Then I'm going to add the 64 and the 26 and uh, the 90. And I should get 180. So there you are. Always double check on your little map. So we know that angle A measures 64 degrees. And that is a, a an acute angle. So, all right. So find the measure of A of the, of the one shown above. So we did that. Now, here we have something interesting. We have two triangles. One of them has a right angle, so we know that's 90 degrees. 
and a 43 given for the other one, and angle 1, we don't know. So we can start there. We can say uh, angle 1 plus the 90 degrees plus the 43 degrees are supple or, uh, interior angles of a triangle equal to 180 degrees. So we're going to add these two numbers up. And I get 133, if I'm not mistaken. Then I'm going to subtract it. So that I'll know what angle 1 is. The measure. And I better put that little M. Because I'm measuring angle 1. And when I do the math, I get 47 degrees. And I'm going to test that with my calculator. Make sure that I have everything correct. That is 90 plus 43 plus my answer of 47. And I get 180. So I did good math. And I have this angle here. All right. Now, I notice that angle, the measure of angle 3 has to equal the measure of angle 1. And those are vertical angles are equal. Or we could do supplementary, but I think it's easier than that. So we know that angle 1 is 47 degrees, so therefore angle 3 has to be 47 degrees. So we got this one and we got the one and the three. All right. Well, three and two is a straight angle. So we can say angle three plus angle two is a straight angle. So it's equal to 180 degrees. Angle three is 47 degrees. And we're wanting the measure of angle two. So we're going to do the subtraction process to both sides. So we got measure of angle 2 to be 3, 3, 1. All right. So if I add the 47 to that, I get the 180 degrees. So this is 133 degrees. Well, the measure of angle 4, that's an angle sign, is equal to the measure of angle 2. And angle 2 is 133 degrees. So the measure of angle 4 is 133. So now I have that one. All right. So if... I know that angle two, angle three is 47 degrees. And I know 77 is given. Then I know that uh, 77 degrees plus ang the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle five have to equal 180 degrees. Well, angle three is 47. Now all we need is angle 5. I'm going to add these two, and I'm going to get 14, 1, uh, 124 degrees, plus the measure of angle 5 has to equal 180 degrees. I'm going to remove the 124 by the subtraction principle of equality. Oops, that's a 4. I know you see it. So that the measure of angle 5, then, is 6, and this is 5, 56 degrees. And I'll check to make sure that that triangle is correct. So I'm going to move my calculator over here, and I'm going to clear, and I'm going to enter what I know. 77 
was that corner. 47 was the next one. And I calculated 56. I'm going to add it 180. So I'm good. So angle 1 is 47. Angle 2 is 133. Angle 3 is 47. Angle 4 is 133. And angle 5 is 56. Right. Now let's look at this one. We have an isosceles. That means the sides are equal and the base angles are equal. All right. And we have two sides of equal length. The angles opposite these sides have the same measure. Use the form, uh, the information to the right to help find the measures of angle one. And the measure of angle five. All right. Well, if we have one, we have two. And then a five uh, is what we have. Now, we notice that this part right here is a straight angle. All right. So that means that the two adjacent angles equal 180. So for the green, we have 115 degrees plus the measure of angle one equals 180 degrees. So I'm going to subtract the 115 degrees from both sides. And that gives you the measure of angle one to be five, six, 65 degrees. All right. And then I have, uh, the measure of, uh, I want, so angle one is 65 degrees. Now I want angle five. Angle five is over here. Now, if one is, if the measure of angle one must equal the measure of angle two by definition of isosceles. That's a me, right? No, it's an I. Sorry. Funny, when I print, I can't spell, it seems like. Sides equal... as well as base angle. All right, we said we said that earlier. So we know then that the measure of angle two is going to be 65 degrees. So then we have angle two and five as supplementary. Angle 2, the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 must equal 180 because they are, it's a straight angle, a line. And they're adjacent angles to it. And we know 2 is 65 degrees, so we're going to substitute the measure of that. Now we're going to do the subtraction process. So that the measure of angle 5 is going to be 5, 1, 1, 15 degrees. And there we have it. And that's equal to 1, 1, 5 degrees. We're going to use a calculator just in case that... Um, I might have made a small mistake or something. 180 minus that uh, 65. 15. All right, we're good. All right, so I've answered that question. Now, uh, this is information on similar triangles. Similar means 
they have same a the same size angles. Proportional proportional sides. All right. So it's like it's being stretched. You can have a small one and then you can stretch it. So here we go. Uh, similar figures have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. By shape, they mean the angles and the structures. In similar triangles, the angles are equal. Angles are equal. That's very important. But the sides may or may not be the same length. Corresponding angles are angles that have the same measure in two triangles. Corresponding angles. Corresponding sides are the sides opposite the corresponding angles. And this is very important to find missing sides or in finding uh, uh, missing angles. So. These definitions help construct ratios, that's another word for fractions, find Similar values of sides. All right. So a ratio is A to, is to B as C is to D. And we solve it by cross multiplication. We say that A times D is equal to B times C. And then we solve for the missing value. All right, so here we go. Explain why the triangles are similar and find the missing X. All right, we notice that if we have a line with one or an angle and then uh, on a triangle, then we know that these angles are equal. And if we have that with two marks, then we know these angles are equal because the angles have to be equal. And of course, this one would be three marks. And therefore, they are similar triangles. All right. And then we would look at their sides as a proportion. So explain why these are similar. So we can state all angles from one, from first triangle are congruent That means equal in, in, ge in geometry to corresponding. Corresponding means at the same kind of shapes, angles of the second triangle. Right. So that means that they are in a ratio proportion. So we can say 33 is to 11 as, and then we want this guy, 15, okay, because we did the large 
to the small a ratio 15 is to x all right then we're going to do the cross multiply thirty three x thirty three times x is equivalent to seven times fifteen all right so now i'm going to do a little bit math and you can use your calculator so i'm going to do eleven times that fifteen one sixty five What did I say it was? I already forgot. I'm sorry. 165. I want to make sure. Then I'm going to divide by the 33 to figure out what X is because they asked us what that side is. All right. So here I go. And I get 5. X is 5. So the missing side of similar triangles is five inches. The IN stands for inches. Choose the reasoning for them being sim similar. And this is number B. Corresponding angles are equal. Right. It, and the missing side is 5 inches. Yeah. Now here we have one that are drawn within each other, but they're still similar. The triangle ABC a small one is similar to a so we have the small I angle a B C larger as right so then we say, find the length of CA. Well, CA is this one right here. We want this guy. We don't know what it is. All right. And we know everything else. <clears throat> so we start with, they are similar. Therefore, corresponding angles of similar triangles are equal. So therefore, we can do ratios. All right. Well, we know the height is six. Uh, so we can do small to large, right? We're going to do small too large side. All right, the small side is three. This three is to six. As, and now we're going to do the side we need. The long side is 10, is to x. Now we're going to do the cross multiply. And we're going to have the 3 times the 10 equal to the 6x. This is 30 equals 6x. Divide by that 6, 5 is x. So the measure of the line CA it's really a segment, CA, is 5. 
We don't know the units because we don't have one. All right. So our last part of this lesson is something we've done of since sixth grade, I think. Or maybe that's the Pythagorean theorem. theorem. Pythagoras was a very fascinating man. And he did a proof about uh, all squares. These are all squares surrounding a triangle in the center. And he found out the relationship that A squared, that plus B squared equals C squared. And he called them legs, the leg of the uh, the leg of the triangle plus the leg of the other side of the triangle equals a hypotenuse squared. And the hypotenuse is usually C. It is a side opposite, opposite the right angle. And this is only for finding distance of a right triangle. That means that we said it earlier that it has a 90 degree angle somewhere in that triangle. And then the mathematics is easy and we're talking about a square root. A square root, once we solve it, is uh, if we had like the number four, then the base root is two. And if we wanted the square root of nine, we would have three, etc. And we'll be using our calculator. So here we have a right triangle. It says use Pythagorean theorem. So that says that this is a right triangle because we can't use it unless it's a right triangle. And we're needing the hypotenuse. Right, so we know that it's a squared plus b squared, the leg squared, and added is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So that is 5 squared plus 12 squared, some hypotenuse squared. Well, this is 25 plus 144 is equal to the hypotenuse squared. All right, if I add these two, I get 169 is equal to C squared. If I want the base value of C, I have to take the square root on both sides. Because we only do the same stuff on one side as well as the other. So that would give me the square root of the 169 equals to the square root of C squared. Well, this is 13 equals C. But let's talk about the calculator, even though we know the answer. Okay, to get the square root on your calculator, x squared. See the square root symbol above it. It looks like a check mark and a division sign. A check mark, not division. It is a root value. So let's do that. So we wanted second 
x squared, oops, sorry. Second x squared, and you see the square root, and then enter the one, six, nine, and give it a command by enter, and we get 13. Now remember, distance is always positive. So we have 13 meters, and it keeps a measurement of whatever we're working with. Not everything is going to come out beautiful like 13. So let's do this one. Now we know we're missing the what? Hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the longer side of a right triangle. It's always opposite the right angle icon. All right. So we know a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So I'm going to have it, it doesn't matter which one I put first, 24 squared plus 10 squared equals C. Both of those in my calculator. 24, and that's an X squared, and I'll put and X squared equals 6. 76 equals c squared. Now remember, we have to take the square root of both sides. Now this is c, and now we're going to do the calculator. Get 26. So c equals 26. So now we're looking at some little proofs and we want to see whether triangle one, this is triangle one right here, is and triangle two, this one right here, are congruent. That means equal. So that means that the sides are equal and the angles are equal. So let's see. And state uh, why selecting these. And I didn't list them, so we want to talk about these. So it is side, side, side. That means that the sides are all equal, all right? Then we have side, angle, side. And that's how you read it. As you go uh, clockwise. And then we have angle, side, angle. All right, in this one, we notice that the side, two sides are equal, and interior of uh, uh, vertical angles are equal. So we have side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So we'll look at it again. So we're saying that because the vertical angles are equal and we have 
two sides surrounding it as equal, we say side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. And that's what we state for the reason of it being similar. Now here's an application problem. And it's used as a proportional analysis of, of figuring out heights. So we use these similar triangles to develop those ratios and we can find an estimate of height. Is it gonna be exact? No, but it'll be pretty close. So here we have to use similar triangles to solve. Already we know they're similar. We have the large one with the tree being the perpendicular. And then we have the smaller one, which is the man against that side. And we have uh, that the man is six feet tall and he's the, the straight edge, if you will, the, the perpendicular. And he is standing 154 feet away from uh, the tree, the base of the tree. And the tree casts 165 foot shadow. And the person's shadow is 11 feet in length. What is the height of the tree? So we're talking about a ratio. All right, and we want the height of the tree is to the height of the man So we're going to have the x, because we don't know what it is, is to 6 as, and on this side, we want uh, the uh, length of the shadow over the uh, length what was it? Uh, the tree cast 100 shadow and the person shadow. Uh, the person shadow. Right. So the tree is 165 feet and the person is 11 feet shadow. So now we can do our cross multiply. So we're going to have. 11x is the same as 6 times 165. We're going to use our calculator and like this big numbers. And I'm going to enter the 6 times the 165. Get 990 equal to 11x. I'm going to divide by that 11. And x is 99, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I better check that. I don't think it is. Sorry about that. Yep, 90. And this is in feet. And these are approximate. There's shadows are... Yeah. 
is 90 feet. All right. So then we have this one. A 23-foot ladder is placed against a vertical wall. This is our hypotenuse unit. Sorry about that. And at the bottom of the ladder, standing on level ground, is 22 feet from the base. How tall? How high is the wall? So we have a Pythagorean theorem because we want distance. We have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So we have the 22 feet squared plus the b squared equals the 23 squared, because my right triangle is here, and that's a hypotenuse. So I'm going to have b squared is equal to 23 squared minus 22 squared. We're going to do that in our calculator. I'm going to take the square root approximately, what it, and we're going to do, it didn't, I don't know how many decimal places, but you're going to read it, I'm going to say two, six point seven one, and this is in feet. Last problem. I have a right triangle here. So this is a hypotenuse because this is a. And this is. The height of AB. Find the. Oh, sorry. The length of AB. Well, AB is the. Right. So let's see what we can do. Okay. All right. So if I wanted this one, I have the leg, leg, and this is my hypotenuse. So I'm going to do two of them and then add them. So I'm going to have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm going to have uh, the A squared plus 24 squared equal to 30 squared. And then for the other triangle, the right triangle, I'm going to have the, um, I'm going to have the B one this time. Uh, the 24 squared plus the B squared equals the 40 squared. All right. So if I'm looking for the A squared on this one, I'm going to have 30 squared minus 24 squared. So let's do that math. So I'm going to have uh, 30 squared minus 24 squared. And I'm going to have A squared equals 300 uh, 24. Then I want the square root of that to find the distance of that side. So now I'm going to do second x squared and inner 324. And I get 18. And this is in feet.
Now I'm going to do this one. So b squared here is going to be 40 squared minus that same height of 24 squared. 40 squared minus the 24 squared. Making sure I got it right. And I'm going to get 1024. And of course, I'm going to take the square root is, and then I'm going to do the calculator. So now I know the x is 18 feet, the y is 32 feet. So I'm going to add them up. The length of the law, a segment line AB. All right, there you have it. So, oh, this is uh, fails, um, but the picture didn't stay where it was supposed to. Anyway, we have now finished. We did uh, Euclid and Pythagorean Theorem. Euclid was on parallel lines and, um, and the sum of interior angles equal 180 and supplementary angles. And Pythagorean Theorem was distance for a right triangle. So you can do the homework now. Thank you for listening.